Valuation Modeling. Let's look at the components of CFI's valuation model. There are three main components. The first is Comparable Company Analysis, or COMPS for short, which looks at trading multiples. Then there are Precedent Transactions, which look at past mergers and acquisitions. And finally, there's the DCF model, which performs a traditional discounted cash flow analysis to get the intrinsic value of the business. All of these three methods are represented in a football field chart, which is also contained in the template. Let's look at the purpose of valuation modeling. As you'd expect, it can be used to value a business. It could also be used to summarize various valuation methods when more than one are used. It can create outputs like charts and graphs for presentations to be used in investor relations, mergers and acquisitions, capital raising, etc. The relevant courses that cover this are the Business Valuation Modeling course itself and the PowerPoint and PitchBooks course. Let's jump into the model and take a closer look. Here we are inside the valuation model. As you can see, there's a cover page that outlines what's inside the model. Let's start by looking at Comparable Company Analysis, or COMPS for short. This COMPS table values businesses by taking their market data and comparing that to some financial data, such as sales, EBITDA, or earnings, and calculating multiples. These multiples are then used to value the business that we're trying to value. From there, we can look at precedent transactions. It looks at past mergers and acquisitions and again looks at valuation multiples that can be applied to the company in question. Finally, we summarize the results here in these tables, and these tables are then used to feed into the football field chart. The football field chart illustrates how different valuation methods across the bottom here, such as comps, precedence, discounted cash flow analysis with different scenarios, that's why there's two DCFs, and if it's a public company, the 52 week high and low share price. So we can easily visualize how all these different valuation methods fit together and how they compare to each other. Finally, the dotted orange line is the current share price, assuming this company is a public company or that that information is available. Let's take a closer look at the comms table here. Most of our CFI courses focus on intrinsic valuation with discounted cash flow modeling. This, however, is a form of relative valuation, where we look at other companies and ask if they are trading at a certain multiple, then what must the company we are trying to value trade at? It can be easy to do because public companies have a lot of readily available information, and it's not super complex. It's not like building an entire DCF model, for example. But the flip side is, it's also very hard to find a perfectly comparable business. You'll notice that not only do companies have different lines of business that they're in, but they also may be a different size with dramatically different revenue figures. They may have different margins and they may have different growth rates in their revenue, EBITDA or earnings. And all of these factors need to be incorporated into determining what the appropriate multiple to use is to value a business. Let's flip over now to the football field summary again. So as you can see, everything from the comps and precedents automatically feeds into these tables. And then these tables are used to populate the chart. But we've also got the DCF information. The DCF information is contained right here, and it's actually just a hard code in this worksheet. You may choose to combine the DCF model and this valuation model into one, and then you could link those as actual formulas, or you may choose to keep them separate. Either approach is completely fine. Hopefully you can see now how to combine comps, precedents, and DCF valuation methods into one output that can be used to value a company.